All right, let's talk about what happens when a hydrogen leak channel gets inserted into your electron transport chain. This is, in other words, known as brown fat. But first off, let's start off with reviewing how the electron transport chain ATP synthase works because this is going to be one of the main components that functions in this. So ATP synthase works um, through a hydrogen ion gradient by pumping hydrogen ions through. And for every about three hydrogen ions that go through this ATP synthase, it turns like a turbine. And when that happens, it attracts inorganic phosphate and ADP to come together and fuse, turning into ATP. So we are going through the process known as ATP synthase here. So once we make that ATP, that ATP can be used somewhere else in the body, like helping active transporters work and, and various other things. So now let's look at the electron transport chain as if you were to insert a hydrogen leak channel. So here's our hydrogen leak channel. And once a hydrogen leak channel is present, you'll find that the hydrogen ions that are present in the intramembranous space tend to go through the hydrogen leak channel as well as the ATP synthase. So ATP will still be made, but less ATP is going to be made because hydrogen ions are going to go through this hydrogen leak channel as well. And when the hydrogen ions go through this hydrogen leak channel, no ATP is made because this hydrogen leak channel does not have this turbine setup that produces ATP out of inorganic phosphate and ADP. So every time we send hydrogen ion through it, we get less and less ATP. And that ATP is very important. We need that ATP to have our body function regularly. If our body's not functioning regularly, as it should be, um, because it doesn't have enough ATP, our body is going to try to get that ATP somehow. So that ATP is going to come from getting more electron transport carriers, which is our NADH and our FADH2. Now those, if you remember how these electron carriers come about, they come about through the process of glycolysis and aerobic respiration. So the way we gain those and the way we make glycolysis and anaerobic respiration function is by having products that are consumable to make that work. Products that are consumable to make these processes work are things like glucose, fatty acids, and amino acids. And we get these from our diet. So if we up our diet and up the amount of glucose and fatty acids and amino acids that we're intaking will be just fine if there's a hydrogen leak channel. But if we don't, then our electron transport chain is going to start getting these products from other places. It's going to start taking it from our body. It's going to start taking it from all over our body and then we're going to lose weight. So in other words, more glucose, more amino acids and more fatty acids are gonna be used to contribute to getting and meeting that quota of ATP that is needed to help the body function properly. Now, not only does that happen, but our body heat or body temperature is going to rise. The reason why this happens is because if you remember back in the process of glycolysis and aerobic respiration, every time we undergo some kind of chemical change, uh, heat is released. And when this exothermic heat is released, our body temperature or our core temperature begins to rise. 